Well, hello everybody. This is Brother Todd with your Victory Minute, and I hope you boys and girls out there are having a great day. Been a while since I got to say that to you. Uh, we've been doing some different things online, but we're going to be bringing the minutes back into some other things we're doing with these shorts on YouTube and these reels on Facebook and all of those kinds of things. And I'm going to tell you right now, this little contraption holds my phone has done acted up on me two days in a row, and it did it just a second ago. I about had this thing done, and it it decided it was going to throw a gear. So if, if it, if I just got to grab it, then I'm just going to grab it and keep on talking and y'all just make fun of me, uh, <laughs> for, uh, for it. Cause it's about got me aggravated. Anyway, one of the reasons I'm going to go back to, or needed to get this minute done. And I've been needing to get these back out. Uh, but I've been kind of putting it off, but I got something coming up. I can't let, I got to let you know about. And then two, it got some thoughts going in my head that I hope, uh, maybe it'll be, uh, a little bit of a help to you okay on the 15th of october we're going to have a service there at the church i hope you can be there if not please be sure and make plans to watch us live on online that day at 10 o'clock central time but uh we're going to have our 20th anniversary of the church uh be 20 years ago we started victory church and uh and we're going to have a big old throw down we'll have a big service we're going to have a big old barbecue dinner y'all come it's all you can eat for for, for as free as it can get a bunch of guys cook it up. Everybody's fixing sides, all that kind of stuff. We'll have a great, great time. But anyway, uh, I've been thinking a lot about that service and those kind of things. And, you know, Victory Church has never been a, oh, let's look back at it kind of church. I'm, I'm not that way. Uh, I learned from when the Apostle Paul said, I forget those things which are behind. And I, and I press forward to those things which are ahead. I want to get a hold of that uh, that the reason God got a hold of us far, uh, you know, everything is beautiful in its time. And when it's time is over, it's done. Uh, you've got to be able to move in life. You've got to be able to move from one different season of life to the other. Uh, and you can't get bogged down. Now, churches get bogged down. They spend more time uh, putting up historical markers than they do casting vision for where we're going. In fact, Lord's already laid the message on my heart for if we get to October the 15th, what I'm going to be talking about. And this show ain't talking about, oh, let's reminisce in the past. I had no granny. She's 102, right? She liked a month being 102 when she died. When she was 100, I probably said this on this thing before. I sat down there with her and uh, tried to talk to her about what it was like to live 100 years. And I said, Granny, I called her Grandma Wee. I said, Grandma Wee, what do you think about living 100 years? And she said, well, I thought it'd take longer. That was all she said. <laughs> I couldn't get nothing else out of it. There was a party going on. I let it go. Well, I let it go to the point a couple of years later, in February of 2000, uh, she passed away. Uh, she One of those real unique uh, deal. She lived in the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st century. And she had it in her head. She was going to make it to 2000. But anyway, she, um, I, I, I was kicking myself. I was telling her daughter, my grandma, my dad's mama, before she passed on. I said, you know, I wished I, I, I had spent more time talking with Grandma Wee about, you know, the 100 years. She said, wasn't well, you any good. I said, she didn't talk about the past. I said, she wasn't interested at all. I said, Ken folks tried to get her to tell this and tell that. And she tell them, if y'all don't leave me alone, I'm going to go back to Texas, <laughs> this, up in Missouri, where she's originally from. And they was trying to find out everything about all the kin folks and all that. She wasn't interested in talking about the past. She told them, say, y'all leave me alone. I'll write some stuff down when I get back home. And that's what she did. She had any desire to live in the past. And uh, I guess I got that from her. Uh, but I think about like what Paul said. I learned early in ministry that to start applying that. Um, first, you want to you get bogged down in your... You'll let your failures uh, define you, and you you got to forget those failures behind. We may I may talk make some minutes or two about that, and I've talked about it some on here. And, and you can't get bogged down in your successes. That was the second thing I learned. Uh, you can't get bogged down in your successes. Uh, uh, you you notice in the Word of God, it doesn't it doesn't talk about them people living on their experiences. You one of these Christians, you run around going to church every week looking for an experience. They got to get bigger and bigger and bigger. God never told us, remember what we, we've done. He, he never told Peter, remember the time you walked on the water. He, he said, you got to be filled with the Spirit. you got to move from one experience to the other. Guys, if there was ever a group of people that could have lived on experiences, it was the apostles. But you never see them. You never see them remembering. You always see them operating in the moment. You can't, you can't get bogged down in your failures. you got to let God forgive them, and you got to move on. You can't get bogged down in your successes right old people love to live in the past 
Love to live in the past. I used, I, I used, uh, used the saying, you know, about football and sports and stuff. The older I get, the better I was, right? Hey, man, we got it. We got a tendency to want to live in the behind us, right? And and we idealize everything. I've heard some people, you know, they talk about their kin folks been dead 20, 30 years. You give you give the sorest old guy around here 20, 30 years, and his kids will talk about how great he was. And he wasn't a great guy. He was a sorry guy. He was a jerk. Everybody knew he was a jerk right but it's time we go back we idealize it and, it and it lets us live in a fantasy land the third place you can't live and i learned this later is in empty desires uh you you got to recognize a season comes and a season goes and you cannot live in things that are not relevant you can't live in things that are not realistic I, I know I've talked about this on these before but the reality is i'm not going to be the starting quarterback for the dallas cowboys no matter how hard I start practicing. I can practice and practice and practice, but at my age and, and the talent I had when I was young, sure wasn't enough to get me to take Roger Staubach's place. So that's just a reality, and I can't live there. And while I know that's an extreme way of kind of putting it, the truth is when it's when the season's over, the season's over. This is where midlife crises come from. You see these guys running around trying to, trying to grab a hold of something they never was, right? Nuh-uh. It's an empty desire, right? The toupee's not fooling anybody. The big gold medallion, the yellow Corvette, and all of those kinds of things, it's not fooling anybody. You got to embrace where you are and go from where you are. The fourth thing, and I haven't talked about this much on these or really even in preaching a lot, is you can't let your difficulties uh, define you. You can't let your difficulties set where you're, what you're focused on. And what I mean by difficulties is the things you've been through. Um, we got two Big realities, y'all hear me now. There's two big realities um, uh, going on in the world, or a big reality going on in our world in America today, and that is victimhood. Now, when I say there's two realities, there's some of you that have been victimized, honestly, uh, and I'm not here to minimize anything you've been through, uh, but you you've been through some some maybe some terrible things, maybe some horrible things happened to you. Okay, there's that real reality of victimhood. And then there's what we're experiencing all in popular culture today where everybody is a victim and everybody's looking for somebody to blame and everybody's looking for an excuse to make. Okay, it's trying to get it'll get you to the same end, whether it's it's legitimate or it's not legitimate. It'll get you trapped when you define your yourself by what's been done to you or by what you've been through. See, let me speak to those of you that have been genuinely traumatized. Uh, there's, there are real events and issues in your life. Uh, brother, little sister, you hear me. Those are, th those are things that happen to you. That's not who you are. It's not who you are. You may have been in a powerless situation. Things happen to you when you're a little kid by people bigger than you, older than you, those kinds of things. Those are, they're, they're tragic, they're sinful. They're not in the perfect will of God. They, they, they do exist in a sin-cursed world. But, but, you, but while it has shaped you and probably no doubt made you very sensitive to other people's pains or misfortunes and those kinds of things, what I'm saying is, is you can't let that define you. You can't let it define you. That, that's something you have to refuse to do. Uh, even if it's something that was honest, even if it's something legitimate, you got to recognize God doesn't not waste a hurt. God will take those scars. He turns them into trophies of grace. Okay. Now, some of you, you've not been near as victimized as you think you have been. Okay. You, it, it, listen, the world's tough. The world's a tough place to be in. Some of y'all, you just need to you just need to grow up and just grab it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, but those of you that have been genuinely affected, those of you have genuinely been traumatized, you've, you've went through some genuine difficulties. Even in those genuine difficulties, they can't shape you. You can't let them put you in a box, okay? Because if that happens, you're never going to believe you are who God says you are. We sing a song at church. I can't remember the name of it. The tagline, uh, you know, everything got tagline now. It uh, it, it says, uh, "I am who the I am says I am," and they sing that a bunch of times. You know, like these songs nowadays do. I am who the I am says I am, and of course the I am. When Moses says, "Who who am I going to say sent sent me?" And he said, "Well, God said, well, since I am that I am, you tell him I am sent you." Okay. But I am, Todd Peavy, I am in Christ who the Lord says I am. And that's where that's what I've got to operate from. 
if I'm gonna if I'm gonna really genuinely move forward, I can get stuck real easy um, in what's happened to me or what I think or the situation I'm dealing with. But I have to be able to call things that are not as though they are. Okay, as part of living the life of faith. Think of old Gideon. He's he's uh, old Gideon's in the time there. The judges and the Midianites are in the land and. Uh, old Gideon is, uh, he's threshing wheat in a wine press. Okay. You threshed wheat outside so the dust could blow it. The wind could blow the dust off. So he's choking down in this old wine press trying to hide from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord shows up. The Lord shows up and he says, he says, Hey, Gideon, I'm paraphrased. Gideon, you mighty man of valor. You mighty man of courage. Well, it didn't look like it, but that's what God knew he was. Because even though it took old Gideon some convincing, that rascal led 300 people against more than 120,000 people, okay? And God broke the great miracle and um, and confused the enemy, and then they all took off after him. And one of my favorite verses there from Judges 8, uh, in fact, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is they crossed over the river exhausted but still in pursuit. Exhausted but still in pursuit. That's who God knew Gideon was. Gideon was not the man who'd been victimized by the oppressors. He was not the man who was hiding. He was not the man just doing the best he could. He was he was doing the best he could till God got a hold of him. And what I'm trying to say to you is if God is is speaking to you, if God's if God's leading you somewhere forward, let's go forward with it. Our best days are ahead of us. God's not brought us out to leave us where we're at, right? What he, Moses tell him, he said, the Lord brought us out to bring us in. And the Lord's wanting that same reality to be operating in your life, whether it's us individually, it's our families, our church, like Victory Church. We get together on the 15th. Oh, we're going to we're going to talk about the things God's done. We had great uh, some great mission stuff that's happened this past week, and those kinds of things. And we've we've got a history full of those things, but they all come from believing God in the moment. And then we can move on. I spent plan on spending about five minutes talking about what where we've come from, and spending the rest of our time talking about where are we going, right? I want to do more. I want to reach more. I want to be more, right? I want to serve more. I want to. I want to see what God is yet to do, right? And 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 that same reality can 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 carry us in life. You may be in a different season. Then it's time to move in it. You may be an empty nester now. Well, you're not the parents of teenagers anymore. Now you're parents of adults, and you got to get to live in your life. You're gonna sit down and watch TV set. Like some old some old codger sitting around just become an expert on gun smoke or mash reruns or friends reruns or whatever, walking dead, whatever's out there that's in reruns. Is that what you're going to do? Spend the rest of your life just sitting in front of a TV set coming in complaining about the price of, of electricity and gasoline till you die? No, no, we ain't got time for it. Ain't got time for it. Be moving ahead. Be moving ahead. Don't let anything make you get stuck. Forgetting those things which are behind, okay? Hey, I hope you can be there on the 15th. Uh, I'm going to put out some more things along this uh, Philippians chapter 3, uh, verses 12 through 14 idea. And I know I've done this before, but I'm telling you, the Apostle Paul told the church at Philippians how he lived his life. And that brother lived one of the greatest Christian lives that I've ever heard or seen about, so... Amen. Let's apply some of it. Hey, I hope you have a great day. I hope you're walking in God's blessings. Look forward to being out here with you, doing more and more of these minutes. And you mark your calendar right now, and you plan on getting to Victory Church on October the 15th. All right? You have a great day. Bye-bye, y'all.